The family say women should be allowed and are entitled to walk. Well, more and more people have joined the procession as the walk has gone on, walking behind the family to show their support and to remember Zara. People came from far and wide to pay their respects and show their support, demanding change around violence against women. What we need to do to stop men's violence against women and girls is to be working broadly with the community, doing um, education work with young people, with men, young men, young girls, women, uh, the communities. There is so much work to be done. The family say they are determined Zara Alina is not defined by her death, but for her to be remembered as a strong and fearless woman whose values should be upheld by all. Aisha Baksh, BBC News. A woman who's receiving end-of-life hospice care has had her spirits lifted by a very special visitor, her horse. Her name's Hayley Golding. She's 50 and she's been cared for in Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire. She said that the chance to stroke and cuddle her horse, called Passion, was amazing and that she hadn't believed that the visit would be possible. Oh, it's such a lovely image it's there nice, and it's it? so nice that Hayley could be with a horse again. We wish her all the best. Uh, you're up to date with the uh, main stories this morning. It's nearly 11 minutes past eight. The family of a teenager who died after a severe allergic reaction to a takeaway meal are hoping they can help to educate other businesses to avoid creating similar tragedies. Megan Lee died in 2016. Her parents, Gemma and Adam, have helped to produce a video for the food industry to warn uh, people about the risks and their responsibilities. I've been speaking to Gemma and to Adam about their work. Megan was... we can than you would ever meet. Her friends would, you know, describe her as the most infectious man. So when we do all this, yes, we, you know, we lost Megan and it's something that nobody ha should have ever have to go through. But we do think about Megan whilst we're doing it. Um, and to try and turn a negative into a positive is really important because of who Megan was. The training material is great, but when you put the real life stories to that, so there's two videos within the training material. There's um, Day in the Life of Chloe, um, so that's living with allergies, so the consumer can understand, well, the businesses can understand what it's like to live with allergies. Mm -hmm. And then it's our story, which this is the story of when you get it wrong. Um, and I'm sure lots of cities around the UK and the globe don't want to be in the position uh, where they're at fault for somebody losing their life through carelessness and lack of understanding. And the fact this video is, has now been translated into many different languages is crucial, isn't it, when you're looking at the takeaway sector particularly? Yeah. There are many different languages spoken by people from many different backgrounds. Yeah. It gives them the tools um, in order to um, build on their knowledge. Um, so, yes, it was produced first in English. We live in England, but we understood that there's many, many organisations, food establishments up and down the UK, that English is not their first language. So to make it easier for them, for them to understand, having the translations, and it's a free resource as well, um, there, there shouldn't be any excuse to try and improve their knowledge. And there's, there's many aspects of society that, that, that can change and that is desperate for change in order to protect um, to, to protect people with food, food allergies. But I suppose the next journey is, is to call for mandatory food safety training um, and, and allergen training uh, for, for all businesses. So it's still optional? Yes. Which many people will be surprised. You, listening to that, you would think, you would imagine when you go into an establishment that they, they have to train the staff to be aware of this, but they don't. No. I mean, they have to have the basics and they have to make sure that the paperwork is filled out and things like that, but by way of training, it's, it's almost non-existent. Mm. Gemma and Adam Lee, they're speaking to me about their daughter, Megan. 
We can speak now to Tanya Ednan Laparus, whose daughter Natasha died after an allergic reaction to sesame seeds, which were baked into the dough of a baguette. And she's with Simon Williams, who's chief executive of Anaphylaxis UK. Good morning to you both, and thank you for taking the time to speak to us this morning. Um, if I start with you, Tanya, first of all, uh, and obviously you, you lost your daughter Natasha in 2016 in really distressing circumstances, which would have driven home the seriousness of allergies to anyone, you'd think. Have you noticed a difference in attitudes towards allergies since then? Yeah, there's definitely been a difference. Um, there's been a shift, and, and that's really been down to, well, we think that's because of allergy awareness. There seems to be a lot more allergy awareness in society than there was. Um, however, it's still not enough. And um, I think the other thing that's happened is people with allergies, they felt very isolated before and they felt that they were doing everything on their own. Whereas now I think they found their voice more, so they're much more likely to ask about allergies um, and, you know, flag up their allergies and expecting to be understood and to be heard. And Simon, I saw you nodding uh, at what Tanya is saying there. Is that something? Has there been this shift over the years? Yes, absolutely. I mean, and people are more confident, but I think also we need to push a lot more uh, around ensuring that places are safe. You know, here uh, at, uh, at Anaphylaxis UK, we want to make sure that you know, restaurants are positively welcoming of people with allergies because they know that they've got all of the systems in place, they've got the training in place, everything is right that that place is a, is a safe place to go. A school is a safe place, a workplace is a safe place. You know, allergies should not be hidden away because they are so serious that they need to be treated seriously. And if we can train and provide training, free training is perfect. You know, we've got, there's no excuse that places should be a no-go areas for people with allergies. Let's just get a thought from both of you. I mean, feel free just to, to follow on one from the other. But, Tanya, you've already had great success um, in getting the, the, the ingredients put onto labels because, obviously, that was the, the problem that Natasha faced. Um, what we just heard about from Megan's parents, from Gemma and Adam, plays in exactly to what, Simon, what you were just saying about the training that members of staff in, in kitchens need. Do you, would, you, would you agree, Tanya, first, that, that that is something that needs to be addressed as a matter of urgency? Absolutely. There's still so much more that needs to be done. Um, Natasha's law came into force last year, and that means full ingredients is now on pre-packed foods for direct sale. So if you go into a cafe or restaurant, they've made a sandwich, they've packed it, they have to give full ingredients. But that's just only part of what people need. And restaurants, you know, restaurants are a big problem. Um, they're only two years ago. Three years old, he died um, from food that was ordered. Um, he flagged up his peanut allergy, and yet um, the pizza had peanut flour in it. It had been substituted that day from the, the flour that it should have been, and he died after a couple of bites. Um, this should not be happening anymore, in, you know. And we completely we're, we're with um, Gemma, Gemma and Adam on this. Um, it's it's incredible to think that you can just start a restaurant, you can open up a, a food eatery and know nothing about allergies and allergens and what they're doing is really really important. It has to be legislated, it has to be something that every single restaurant must know about allergens and, and how severe they can be for people. So I mean one of the one of the things that um, you, you just mentioned that peanut allergies and, that, and that's a tragic story that you, you just outlined, Tanya, is th there is med med medicine is, is, you know, and, and medical advances are starting to help in this area, aren't they? Because there are now ways that people with a peanut allergy can be helped to build some degree of, of resistance. That, that's got to be a good thing. It is a good thing. It's it's. What's kind of weird about it is that this immunotherapy has been around for 100 years and it's been available on the NHS for wasp stings and bee stings. But 
um, only privately for people with food allergies. And what we're doing at Natasha's Foundation is we're funding a big clinical trial to see how we can actually offer that to the public on the NHS. The trial is for peanut and milk, but it needs to be extended to any allergen, any food allergy that you have. Um, and that it's a great thing to happen, but we still need more clinics. Mm. We need more doctors. We need more, even in the medical world, getting to change. But I think with Gemma, or we're with Gemma and Adam here, that we just feel it has to be faster. Things need to move quicker than they have been. And it shouldn't be the parents of children who've died that are in